Today I'm going to continue last week's video which was all about salicylates which are a class of aroma chemicals in perfumery. So in last week's video I started exploring the salicylates, seeing what they smelled like and having a bit of a look into the history and background and how they're used. In this video I actually go and take those salicylates and start blending them into some basic trials to get an even better understanding of them. So if you're interested also in the salicylates and you want to start blending with them then maybe this video could give you some ideas on things that you could try and you'll find out what worked for me and what didn't work. Okay, so the format of this video is basically gonna be a kind of exploration study of these salicylates. So I'm gonna start off by sharing with you the ideas which I initially had. Then I'm gonna talk about the different types and the different sets of trial blends that I did. And then finally, at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you which conclusions I drew from the whole process. So. If you think about it, this video is effectively like a mini uh, science report or kind of a, a lab report on what I did, what I thought would happen, and then what I actually did, how it went, and then finally what I learned from it. Anyway, let's start off by talking about the initial ideas. So in the salicylates video, one thing I noticed when I was looking up the salicylates was it often said that they would work well in floral compositions, especially benzyl salicylate, which said was a really good thing to use as a floral blender. So what I took from that is I should probably start blending uh, the salicylates or especially the benzyl salicylate with some florals. Next, when I was doing the research in the book Perfume, The Alchemy of Scent by Jean-Claude Elena, um, also, if you're looking for that, I've now got it back in stock in my web store, so go and check that out. But in that book, it also said that the benzyl salicylate in particular could be used as part of a exotic or a spiced floral accord in combination with eugenol. So that was another one of the ideas that I wanted to explore in this video. Next, only a few weeks ago, we went and made the Grosjman Accord, which was a famous accord which is widely used as kind of quite a solid base or a foundation for a lot of perfumes. So I thought, again, because last time we were blending different things with the Grosjman Accord to see how that would affect it, it would also be interesting to see how the salicylates affected the Grosjman Accord, so that was another thing I tried. Finally, if you watched the last video, you should remember I said that methyl salicylate out of the three salicylates I had seemed to be the most difficult to think of a use case for because of the way it smelled. One person left a comment in that video saying that they tried blending methyl salicylate with orantiol and sweet orange oil um, to make a kind of solar accord. So that was another idea that I thought I'd try out in this video. One final idea, which apparently is something else that you can do with the salicylates is, especially with amyl salicylate, is use them as part of a fougere accord. Now, I'm gonna do a video about a fougere accord in the future, so I'm gonna ignore this for now, but do be aware that if you're looking to make something with salicylates, a fougere accord, again, is another good option. Okay then, so first for the experiments. So the first thing I said I was gonna do was try blending the salicylates with some florals. Now, I don't actually have that many floral raw materials. It's not something that I've studied that much yet. Also, I haven't really gone and made many floral accords particularly. So what I thought I would do for this is keep it quite simple and use a rose material which I have and a jasmine material. So both of these were pre-made bases. The rose one was Rose Jiv Code 217 and the jasmine material was Jasmine 4 952925 by Firmenich. So the idea here is that the jasmine base gives a rough jasmine smell and the rose base gives a rough rose smell pre-built out of the box and then what I'm gonna be looking at here is the effect of the salicylates. So the first thing I did was I actually went and dipped those raw materials at about 1% and 1% because they're often quite strong in the scent strip. And then I compared them to the salicylates dipped in at 10% because in general, those are a bit weaker. Then what I did was I held the scent strips together just to get an idea of what those combinations might smell like. Now, when I did this, what I initially thought was in particular, the methyl salicylate didn't really go with either the jasmine or the rose bases. The other ones, on the other hand, it was hard to determine exactly if it worked or not, but it wasn't particularly bad enough for me to think it's not worth doing an actual trial blend. So for all four of those remaining combinations, that's both benzyl salicylate and amyl salicylate with both the rose and the jasmine bases, I decided to do one trial blend for each of those. Now, again, based on my experience, especially the floral bases are quite strong 
and the benzyl salicylate in particular is a bit weaker. And with the amyl salicylate, I thought it's probably good to keep it at a similar level to the benzyl salicylate for the trials, just in order to make a fair comparison. What I decided was to kind of make a skeleton formula, which was effectively one salicylate with 0.1 grams at 10%, mixed with 0.2 grams of a corresponding floral at 1%. And what that meant was by doing all of those four combinations, I would always have the same ratio of five parts salicylate to one part floral in the formula. By doing that, I just kind of was trying to keep it so that these experiments were very comparable. So I was comparing like for like as such. Each time the concentration of salicylate or the concentration of the floral would be the same. And also in that ratio, hopefully, they're somewhere near balanced to begin with, such that I should get a good evaluation. Now, when I did this, here's what I basically thought of the four different variations. So firstly, the amyl salicylate with the rose jivko. Now, this combination I actually didn't like very much. I don't think the amyl salicylate and the rose blended well together at all. I thought what it did is it took the rose and it pushed it more into a kind of soapy direction definitely not something that I would really think would be the best in a fine fragrance, so like a normal perfume. Maybe in some kind of situation, I'm sure the two raw materials could work together, but I just didn't think it was a good combination. Now, the other one, on the other hand, the benzyl salicylate, that with the rose, that I actually really thought was quite a good combination. So let me just preface this by when I smelled the benzyl salicylate last time, it's quite very subtle. The effect it seems to have on blends is also very subtle. However, what I did do was I compared the rose on its own, and then I compared the blend of the rose with the benzyl salicylate to that, and what I found was the effect of the benzyl salicylate to me seems to be to just kind of add this fullness or this slight extra dimension to the uh, composition. It slightly adds a almost a sweet, fruity aspect straight away, um, but overall, when you compare them, it just feels like it's a bit more 3D. So that actually was really interesting. It reminded me a little bit of the effect that Hedion has on blends. So that one I was really happy with because I think it's good to know in the future if I'm working on a rose perfume, then benzyl salicylate might be a good kind of modifier to put on at the end just to make it pop a bit further. Anyway, next let's talk about the jasmine. So with the jasmine, with the amyl salicylate, let's first talk about that. I thought that those two things combined okay. It definitely wasn't like the rose when I put them together and I thought it smelled bad. The jasmine and the amyl salicylate, I think they smelled fine together. They didn't smell particularly special, nothing amazing, but they didn't smell bad either. So what I would say is they kind of smelled like the sum of their parts in that by putting them together, I haven't made a particularly great accord or anything special. But if I were to have a perfume which had both jasmine and amyl salicylate in it, I shouldn't be particularly worried about them clashing either. So that's still useful to know. Next with the jasmine and the benzyl salicylate. So in this case, again, I think the effect was very, very subtle, even more subtle than with the rose, but I still do think it was positive. Now this jasmine base, I don't think is a perfect recreation of jasmine. I definitely think it has got some holes in it. Um, but what I do think is that the effect of the benzyl salicylate is, is it seems to me just to very slightly balance out that existing base. So again, this is a good sign because it makes me think if I want to use that jasmine base in the future, then maybe having a bit of that benzyl salicylate alongside it should have some kind of positive effect. Anyway, next let's talk about the exotic or spiced floral accord. So in this case, it's basically the combination of eugenol and benzyl salicylate that we're looking at. Now already, when I began, I knew that eugenol, which is quite a strong material, was probably going to overpower the benzyl salicylate, which is a very subtle material. So to prepare for that, what I did was I took a scent strip with eugenol at 1% and a scent strip with benzyl salicylate at 10% and held those together to see what they smelled like. Now, even with that difference of one order of magnitude, it still felt like the eugenol was quite overpowering. Yet at the same time, I did also feel like I could uh, smell that there was something there. I did feel like it did smell like a bit more than just the eugenol and it did seem like it was in a good direction or it did seem a bit more floral. So what I went and did was I actually went and made then a trial blend. And what I made sure to do was keep the eugenol really, really low. And I tried to keep the benzyl salicylate quite high to see what would happen. 
So in the end, what I did was I had the benzyl salicylate at 5% and the eugenol right down at 0.1%. Now, once I'd made that blend and I went to smell it, I was actually quite happy with it. I was quite interested. So basically what it did smell like, still the dominant note was eugenol, surprisingly, even though it was that much of a difference. But I could definitely smell that it smelled a lot more warmer and it did smell a bit more full, a bit more floral. That kind of benzyl salicylate, you could kind of feel its presence kind of hugging the eugenol in the background. What I did, however, think of that, um, or after I'd made it, was that probably just these two raw materials alone aren't actually enough to go and make that complete exotic floral accord. It felt like I could see quite clearly that I could imagine these two things being the dominant or the main notes that set it apart from other floral accords. But I also thought that there's probably going to have to be more, uh, more generic, probably floral aroma chemicals in here. So maybe things like phenylethyl alcohol. Um, I'm not sure exactly, but what it made me think was I should probably actually go and do some more research on what else would go in this kind of exotic floral accord and then probably leave that actually to a separate study and a separate video and really just focus on that because that project on its own is probably actually quite a big project in that I'm guessing there's quite a few other things I'll have to try with those two, uh, with eugenol and the benzyl salicylate in order to make that complete exotic floral accord. So for that one, you're gonna have to stay tuned for a future video if I get around to it. Okay, so next we had the Grosjean Accord. Now with the Groschman Accord, again, what I did was I first took a scent strip with the Groschman Accord and then I took a scent strip with the salicylate and held them next to each other to get an initial idea of which ones might work and which ones might not at all before I actually committed to making the blends. Now straight away what I found was the methyl salicylate and the Groschman Accord, I really didn't think they worked, it just kind of seemed to ruin the Groschman Accord for me and that made me think this one isn't even worth making a trial blend of. Next, I put the Amos salicylate with the Groschman Accord, and this one, I, I felt like it was okay, but I wouldn't say it made it better overall, maybe even a little bit worse, but not, not so bad that I couldn't imagine it being used. I feel like there's probably a formula in which the Amos salicylate and the Groschman Accord could both be present. Actually, I'm sure there's formulas like that but I also think there's probably gonna to have to be some other elements to tie them together. It's definitely not the accord between those two components, which is necessarily creating um, the effect that's gonna be what you really want, I think. So that one, I didn't bother to make a trial blend of it, but I just think it's still an interesting data point to know that it's probably fine to have those two together. Next, with the benzyl salicylate, when I had that next to the Groschman Accord, I did feel like it slightly improved it somehow, though it was definitely, again, because the benzyl salicylate is quite subtle, a bit difficult to work out just on the sense strip. So I thought this one was worth going and making a trial blend out of. Now, when I went and made the blend for this one, I initially thought it was quite a subtle effect, but I also did think, again, that it had that kind of fruity uh, floralizing effect that it had on the rose. I felt like that same thing was happening again here. I went back and then I actually smelled the Groschman Accord on its own and then I went and smelled this blend to compare the two. And after kind of thinking about it and smelling it a few times, what I decided was I think it seems to soften out the Groschman Accord, even though the Groschman Accord is already quite a soft accord. I think the benzyl salicylate seems to blend it together even further. And in particular, what I noticed was to me, it kind of takes the iso -E super and it really dampens that down a bit. So the kind of woody, more masculine side to the Groschman Accord, it really kind of flattens that out and it's kind of a lot more, a lot softer, velvety. It pushes the Accord in much more of a floral direction. So I can imagine that if you're trying to make quite a floral perfume based on the Groschman Accord, and also if you want to push it into a less woody direction, I think that the Benzyl Salicylate actually is a really good tool in order to do that. Anyway, the final idea was the idea which the person commented in the last video, which was to use methyl salicylate together with orange oil and orantiol. Now, this thing I tried on the scent strips, so I took orange oil, orantiol, and methyl salicylate, I put them on three different scent strips, and then I held them together and smelt them. 
When I smelt this straight away, I decided that I didn't like it, unfortunately. So the reason I think that I didn't like it is because it reminded me of orange cowpul, which is kind of like a cough syrup or a medicine that I used to have when I was a kid. And for some reason, that orange cowpul has got like a really disgusting taste. Um, but to me, I guess it's the orange oil from that accord, then mixed with that medicinal aspect from the methyl salicylate, which when they come together, really seem to give this kind of uh, medicine effect. Um, I definitely don't like it. I wouldn't want to put it in a perfume, but that's just my personal taste. It's not to say that the accord's necessarily bad. Also, maybe I wasn't using kind of the right ratios or even the right raw materials exactly either, because I guess, firstly, I can see how it's possible that if you've got a different orange oil, it might smell a lot different. And then secondly, if you're using um, carefully adjusted ratios of these materials, then actually maybe the effect could change and become nice. But in my case, because I tried it on the three scent strips and I immediately didn't like it, I decided not to go ahead with it and make a trial blend. Anyway, that was the end of the ideas that I initially had, but I actually had another idea after having tried those things, uh, which I also wanted to try. Now, what I'd noticed was that the benzyl salicylate had a positive effect on both the Grosjean Accord and the Rose Jivko, and it seemed to have this same positive effect, which was to kind of add a bit more depth and kind of rounding to the composition and add kind of a slight sweet, fruity, uh, floral element to it. So what I thought would, well, because I remember when I was doing the Groschman Accord, I thought that would be something that would actually work really well with Rose because it's kind of got that kind of pink feeling to me. Um, I think I might've tried that as well uh, in combination. And I felt like, okay, if I had the Groschman Accord with the Rose and then added some benzyl salicylate, surely those would go really well together. So that's exactly what I tried. I made kind of you could call it a new variation on the Groschman Accord, but this time the major component was benzyl salicylate. So I put all three of those together. And when I went and smelled that blend, I immediately thought that, wow, this actually works really, really well. I definitely kind of felt it like it had the best parts of all of those three components kind of all together in one composition. And also the good thing was the initial kind of formula, the initial guess that I made for my trial blend on the quantities, seem to already be kind of perfectly balanced or it seemed to kind of have a very good harmony between itself already. So because of that, I didn't decide to do any more iterations. Yeah, I can definitely see that in the future, if you're using this in the perfume, you might wanna go and do a few more iterations of it. That said, I think this was a really nice blend and I would actually really like to use this in the future as a kind of base in order to build a perfume on top of. So kind of thinking of it as a generic uh, kind of maybe rose perfume base and say I wanted a rose perfume with X, Y, or Z, then I could use this, I think, as a starting point and already go and add the other raw materials to it and see what it smelled like. Um, and I think this would be a good thing to try. So I'll leave that formula for you guys. If you wanna try it, if you wanna try any of the formulas in this video, I'd really recommend this one because I really do think that this one has a lot of potential to build into a full perfume. So go ahead and try that if you've got the raw materials at home. The only thing I did think about that formula was it did seem to fade quite quickly. Presumably that's because the Groschman Accord was actually at quite a low concentration in the end. Uh, and normally you'd put the Groschman Accord at quite a high concentration to act as kind of a backbone to your perfume. So what I would recommend is if you're thinking of uh, using this formula yourself and iterating on it, I would maybe try increasing the level of the Groschman Accord or even just the concentration of the whole formula in order to add a bit more structure, longevity, um, to kind of give you what you'd want with a, a more long lasting perfume. Okay, and finally, to wrap up the video, I'm gonna talk about all the conclusions which I made. So there are basically three main points that I could come up with. Now, the first one is that methyl salicylate, like I originally thought, does seem to be really hard to use. I'm sure there's some good uh, formulas or situations to use it in, but I also do think that they're probably quite niche and that's just due to its kind of medicinal, uh, very distinctive smell. 
The second conclusion is that benzyl salicylate when compared to amyl salicylate seems to be a lot more of a modifier, whereas the amyl salicylate actually seems to stand its own a lot more and actually have much more of its own distinctive note. So the benzyl salicylate I think would be useful a lot more like hedione, applying it as this kind of a thing to your existing floral compositions to maybe make them a bit more juicy, add an extra dimension, whereas the amyl salicylate on the other hand is something that you would be, I guess, looking to make binary kind of combinations with initially when you're coming up with your perfume and working out which notes you want to have in it. Amyl salicylate's got a lot more character of its own and that's going to be something that you're going to have to consider, I guess, more strongly in the context of the composition if it's something you want to introduce or not. Finally, based on my experiments with the Groschman Accord, where I felt actually both amyl and benzyl salicylate could go with that, I felt that because the Groschman Accord has got alpha isomethyl ionone, and that is often used also in violet accords or ionones in general, it made me think that probably it's likely both the amyl salicylate and the benzyl salicylate would go well with a violet floral or a violet accord. So again, I'm not super sure on that, but it's just another conclusion that I kind of drew from this and it's something to keep in mind for the future. Anyway, that's it for me. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this kind of video. Also, let me know if you try out any of these blends or if you tried out any more salicylate blends of your own. I'd be interested to know in the comments uh, exactly what your thoughts are on those. And apart from that, until then, see you next time.